So what I want to talk about today is called independence of events. And this is an important concept, especially in the context of when we're doing a large number of sequential trials that don't have anything to do with each other, right? So for example, let's suppose that I roll two dice and I record, um, you know, die, die A and die B, or die one and die two, right? So I can ask, what's the probability that I got uh, two on the first roll and a three on the second roll? Well, uh, I could make my table of, you know, possibilities. I could say, well, there's only one situation where I got a two on the first roll and a three on the second roll, and there are 36 possible outcomes, right? So the probability of that happening is 1 over 36. Or I could observe that it happens to be true that this is equal to the probability that first I got A equals 2, and then I got B equals 3. The probability of this happening by itself is 1 6. The probability of this happening by itself is 1 6. And so we call these two events independent because the probability of both of these things happening is the product of these two individual probabilities. And so let me write that down mathematically. The definition is that two events A and B are independent if and only if the probability of their intersection is the product of their two probabilities. Okay, And using the concepts that we kind of talked about when we introduced conditional probability, remember that the probability of A given B is the probability of a intersect B over the probability of B. And so if these events are independent, then the top part becomes probability of A times probability of B over probability of B. So another way of thinking about this is that if two events are independent, telling you that B happened doesn't change my underlying understanding of whether A happened or not, right? So knowing B doesn't have any effect on uh, whether A happened or not. And so we're going to do a couple examples of this going forward. So just to be clear, you know, independence doesn't mean that A and B can't happen at the same time. For example, you know, I just want to make it clear that two events being independent is not the same as uh, what is called mutually exclusive, meaning that they don't have any um, events or outcomes in common. Right, so it's not like A and B are totally independent, or totally, totally disjoint, right? It just means that knowing B doesn't give me any new information about A. So let me just do a couple more examples to, to drive the point home. So for example, let's suppose that I roll a fair die, and the event A is rolling a four, and the event B is rolling an even number. So are A and B independent? Well, um, let's check. And you always have to check. You can't just kind of eyeball it. You have to prove it. So in this case, it's pretty clear that these are not independent events. Why is that? Well, the probability of getting A is 1 out of 6. The probability of getting B is 1 half, right? The probability of A intersect B their intersection is just the outcome 4, which has also got probability of 6. So it's definitely true that if I ask, is this number equal to the product of these numbers? Obviously not, right? This is 1 12th and this is 1 6th. So these events are not independent. And a different way of thinking about this in terms of the conditional side is, well, the probability of a given B is, well, it's a third, right? Because 4, the, the A part, makes up 1 out of 3 of these outcomes. And this is not equal to the probability of A, which beforehand was 1 6. So seeing that B happened definitely changed my opinion about whether A happened. Or kind of the other way around, the probability of B given A is 1, right? So if A occurred, A is one of the outcomes in B, and that's definitely not equal to the probability of B, which is a half, right? So there are lots of ways to kind of show that these events are not um, independent. So um, let's do an example where they are independent. 
So uh, an important kind of thing to realize is that you know events can be independent while still seeming, I guess I'll put in quotes, related. So for example, let's roll a die and A is the event 3 or 4, B is the event 2, 4, 6, right? So the probability of A is 1 third, 2 out of 6. Probability of B is 1 half, 3 out of 6. What is A intersect B? It's just the outcome 4, and the probability of A intersect B is 1 sixth, right? And I can see that this is indeed the product of probability of A and probability of B, so these two events are independent, right? Even though they definitely have this outcome 4 in common, right? All this is kind of saying is that, you know, here the probability of this event beforehand was one third, but it so happens that this outcome in common is also one third of B, right? So just telling you that A happened doesn't really change the balance of what might have happened in B, right? The way I think about this is that the proportion of outcomes of S that lead to A is equal to the proportion of outcomes in B that lead to A, right? So before A was a third of the sample space overall, and now it's also a third of the constrained sample space when we just look at B, okay? Same idea is true in the continuous world, so similar ideas for continuous outcomes. So let's take a look at um, three events related to two random numbers, x and y, between 0 and 1. So here's event number 1, this triangle. Let's call this A. Here is uh, Event number two, let's call that B. And here is event number three, let's call that C, okay? So I've constructed each of these events to have probability uh, one half. So now I can ask myself, are A and B independent? Are A and C independent? Are B and C independent? Okay, so let's take a look at um, A and B. Okay, so what is the probability of A intersect B? So A intersect B is just going to be, you know, this triangle up here. What's the probability of that? Well, that's one eighth. Is that equal to the product of the underlying probabilities? No. So A and B are not independent. What is the probability of uh, B intersect C? Well, B intersect C is going to be this part here. The probability of that is a quarter. Is that equal to the product of the two events? It is. So those two events are independent. And I'll leave it to you to show that A and C are in fact not independent. So simple idea, but you have to actually check by computing probabilities. And one last thing I'll say is, you know, we can also look at um, a set of events. So let's look at, um, maybe I have n events. So when we talk about independence of a whole set of events, we have to check that, first of all, all of them are pairwise independent, right? So I have to look at the probability of AI intersect AJ is equal to this product for all possible combinations. 
And also to be totally fair or to, to be totally complete, I also have to look at what about the way that I can take all these things in triples and quadruples and so on. So in general, I need to show that the probability of um, the intersection of a whole arbitrary number of these things is equal to the product of these individual probabilities. Now usually in a class you're not going to be proving this whole detailed thing, but it is possible to generate some tricky combinations of events that are all pairwise independent but actually have a triple dependence, right? So we're not going to do that right now, but just to, so you know, if you're asked about a series or a set of events, you really have to do all the possibilities. And we're going to talk more about a very specific set of independent events called sequential experiments in the next video.